This week we're heading to the Victorian high country for a bit of a challenge. It's the middle of winter and we are in search of snow. Now there are mixed reports. Some are saying that there is plenty of snow. Some are saying that the season is already done. So fingers crossed as Life Off Road heads to the Alps in search of snow. This week on Life Off Road, we're heading out to the Victorian Alps in search of snow. Along for the ride, I've brought a few mates. We've got Tim from Ultimate Nine, Troy from Nitro, Michael from Piranha, James from New Tracks, and Jay and Nick from Clearview. Hey Tim, great to have you along for another adventure. Simon, thank you so much for having me. Really looking forward to uh, this trip. Beautiful weather, hopefully a bit of snow. Jay and Nick from Clearview, your first trip along with Life Off-Road. Guys, great to have you with us. Great to be with you guys. Can't wait to have a ball, mate. It's going to be grouse. Troy, you've changed caps for today. You're running the Nitro vehicle. Yeah, that's right, Simon. Come out to uh, get the trusty Navarra and have a run for the Nitro car. And Charlie and Charlie, we've got Michael from Piranha. Great to have you along. Thanks, Simon. Yes. Always appreciate a chance to get out of the office and do some four wheeling and getting paid for it, so always a good gig. Have you packed some snow chains for us? I did. I'm a bit surprised you don't have a set yourself, Simon, but yes, I've got a set for this car and for your Colorado wagon and the Colorado Ute, so let's hope we can find some terrain that we need to use them in. And James from New Tracks, great to have you along navigating for us. Thanks so much, Simon. It's always very exciting to come along on these trips. So Simon has once again asked me to plan out a bit of a route today. Hopefully we do find some snow, as the boys have been saying, it is a little bit patchy as I'm looking out amongst the mountain tops. I'm not seeing a lot of white. So look, if, if we don't find any snow, my angle produces a fair amount of frost. I can open that and scrape some snow out, sprinkle that, and try and fake it. You know, that's, that's, that's the last resort, that's plan B. Next couple of days we'll be out in the high country exploring, looking for some snow. We started off this morning in Wahala. We're making our way up to Mount Salma. And then from Mount Salma, we'll find a nice place to camp. And then we'll be heading off down through Woods Point and Big River and, and back home through that sort of general direction. So Wahala is a small little town east of Melbourne. Beautiful little town, it's an old mining settlement. Lovely place to visit. It's been mostly preserved as it was 100 years ago. Lovely old buildings. So we left Walhalla, came out onto Bins Road and then up on Springs Road and just a bit of a travel section to make our way towards Mount Useful. And once we turned off onto the tracks and headed up Mount Useful looking for some snow, there, there unfortunately wasn't much snow, but it was nice, good alpine forest, nice and wet on the ground, plenty of puddles and water laying around. So we started heading through a forest that had been cut down and we could see that the sky was nice and blue and the hilltops in the distance which had snow on it. Spot the drone mate, spot the drone. Found it. <laughs> Jeez I'm good. Oh I've got an eye for it. Taking a left turn. This is S16 track. S16, here we go. With a steep overground descent ahead of us, I was thankful I'd fitted a set of off-road towing mirrors. Yeah, the Clearview mirrors are a bit of a must for towing. The convenience you've got, you pop them out when you need them, you pull them back in when you don't. And credit to you guys, they're designed well and built tough. Yeah, so we try to build it obviously to the highest spec as we possibly can. We do do stainless steel components on the inside. It's got a double arm that runs through. In the models that we're providing now, it's got a stainless steel arm running through with a plastic outer tube to give you your double extension and brings it even closer to the vehicle. So we've climbed up the hill and we've seen just a full, huge density of trees that were cut down. Just travelling through a beautiful area of cleared forest at the moment. Cleared forest is an interesting concept that actually allows you to have a view of the wider area. So you do get some beautiful stunning views. It is difficult or challenging to see the decimation when they're logging an area. But the reality is, it's not that far different from what the Aboriginals used to do with burning the environment. 
And the Aboriginals had a very smart, intelligent and proven way of managing the Australian continent, the environment, a lot of devastation, let's call it sustainable logging, I believe is an important part of our ecosystem. So we've got a long descent going on here. This is a bit more slippery, a little bit of grease on the tracks and some quite lumpy rocks in the track. So we just have to pick our way through here and see what happens. Bumpy. Bit bumpy and slippery. Always like downhill. You're in the hands of the gods. Not a lot you can do. Oh, it's a bit slippery. I'm glad this car is a bit lighter. It doesn't slide around as much with these worn out all trains. Lucky. Really interesting section of track. It doesn't look like much, but it's actually quite sharp, rocky, bouncy. And it's just hole after hole after hole. S16's really turning it on for us. Okay, run down under it, Ah, here you go, this is the good stuff. This is uh, interesting, isn't it? Hey. Uh. Cold coffee is the best coffee. That's how they have it in Russia. Cold. In Russia, <laughs> coffee drink you. <laughs> So in the absence of snow, we found a little bit of mud instead, but it's a little bit of a disappointment at the minute. We were hoping for some snow, but this is the sort of fun we're trying to have. Woo! Oh, it's amazing. It's an amazing trip. Yeah, I honestly don't know how that hasn't fallen. Yeah. D is not so salty. How'd you go with the uh, camper, Simon? Oh, good, no sweat at all. It's tracking beautifully. The thing bounces around a little bit, but it's got that off-road suspension, so it's all I have to do it. Just set up a bit of a martini shaker in there, and uh, we'll have some mixed drinks. Well, time to get down to the bottom of the track. Too easy. That sounds like a plan. Wait till later, though. I've got some salt and vinegar flavoured peanuts. I oh, know what you're thinking. Salt and vinegar flavoured peanuts, what though? But they're really good. Don't knock them too dry. Oh. We had no idea of what lay ahead, but as track conditions worsened, I was starting to wish I had some stronger CVs. That's right. What is chrome molly? What does that actually mean? Chrome molly is a variety of steel. It's got a high strength and yield strength to it, meaning that it creates a stronger product in selected applications. It is a performance product that everyday user might not necessarily require, but it certainly gives peace of mind for the guys in patrols and like running bigger tyres or bigger horsepower. And the same goes for the Grey Nomad Tourer. They're towing their van and they don't want to get caught out with any breakages or the like. It gives them confidence in their drive line. Awesome descent down here as we drop down to the bottom of the valley. I believe there's a river down here. But that first river crossing, it was a little bit elusive. As you kind of enter into the river, you don't realise that there's a huge kind of log and or something underneath the water, and then a drop off, and then a steep exit. I did what I normally do in those situations, I just kind of fanged it through. <laughs> Quite a drop into the water there. Just watch your front and your rear over the log as you drop in. A little bit slippery on the way out, but looks pretty good. Tried and true method. Works, works well most of the time. Oh yeah! <laughs> Nick jumped a little bit. He was a little bit nervous about that. He hasn't really been full driving before, so... Probably the deepest river crossings I've ever done. I had a ball. Happy that I'm not behind the wheel. The Navara did really, really well, actually, considering it's got some pretty worn-out all-terrains on it. It's nice and light, so it's doing all right at finding traction. 
quite rocky base. I mean, no problems about mud or traction or anything like that. You might think, oh, I need all this kit to go on these tracks. This is a pretty standard car. It's got some tyres. They're just all terrains. It's got suspension. Most people put suspension. This car's got factory diff lock and many of the dual cab, if they're new, these days have. Get out there and enjoy it because it is a really great country. We're out Mount Selma track. We stopped and had a little bit of lunch and then it was back through the river to make the ascent. Much easier entry, but a little bit of a steeper climb out. The Nitro geared car and I, and I went a different route. Bit of a meandering, windy, relatively steep but not too crazy climb. Obstacle. Went from rocky, slippery to just pretty much slippery. It wasn't in too bad condition, but there was one particularly bad section. James from New Tracks had a pretty mint condition GQ patrol, and we can go pretty much wherever you need it to go. It was quite intimidating to watch him do the obstacles. Yeah, this would have been harder in the snow. We're going for the cheap buttons. We'll hit the lockers. All right, here we go. Normally we see Simon using the off Echo to pull around a camper trailer or the like, but the Colorado 7 had a really good crack today on those tracks. Oh yeah! Got up okay, but I reckon he struggled a little bit. He was running out of some revs and with the camper trailer on. Oh ho ho! Woo! <laughs> awesome ride! The Hilux being so heavy actually needed a couple attempts to get up and that's when I first realised that I might have an issue. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The ruts were quite well formed. If just towards the top there was a situation where there was quite a big hole on the passenger side that meant all the diff was going to ground out. It was just after a left-hand turn, so you didn't really get a great run-up at it. You had to sort of get into it fairly early just to get enough momentum to get up over the washout. I'll just go back to where it's flat. Take it back and launch it. Gave a little bit more berries, put the front locker in as well. Ready? Let's go. There we go. There we go. No really steep ruts or anything like that, but a couple little pinches that caught us out and needed a bit of thinking. Luckily, with the Baja bosses and the rear locker, I was able to climb up reasonably easy. Luckily, in the Nitro Ute in the Navarra, we blitzed it first go. I don't know if it's beginner's luck or anything, but the two basic cars, Michael from Piranha and I, that probably got the least amount of accessories, seem to be having the least amount of dramas. I had a good chance of getting up the ruts like everybody else did, but I thought, no, I'll try a line off to the left, which looked quite doable. No wheel spin and it just drove up it. We were able to sort of get to a spot where all the cars were able to bunch up, which was reasonably flat. I'd noticed a sound in the Hilux in the front right wheel and the sound is getting worse so Simon and everyone pulled over and helped me have a look at it. We worked that out, went back to the cars to get going again. Tim from Ultimate Nines, Nissan Patrol, didn't want to start. So while Dougie's having a few starting issues, the guys have changed the injectors, they've done a little bit of head work to try and clean it up from the last trip before this trip, but are still having some starting problems. Simon was concerned that after a few wheel spins in the Colorado, it was logging some arrow codes. I need a code breaker. Did I bring one? <laughs> I hope so. So we got the code breaker out. You mean this code breaker? 
We're able to read the codes, clear them. It allowed the vehicle to get full power again and make it up to the top of the hill. It's quite a few codes. <laughs> it's got a few codes, you can clear them all. Thanks to Simon and the team, we got it up and running again and continued on. We made the final climb up to Mount Selma. As we sort of thought, there was no snow, unfortunately. One thing the snow did do was leave the tracks really, really slippery. So on the top of Mount Selma and back out onto Mount Selma Road, we were just sliding all over the place. Normally Mount Selma, getting to the top of Mount Selma, it's about 1,500 metres elevation. You would see a little bit of snow around this time of year. It did seem like it was all kind of melted, and so it just turned the top of Mount Selma into one huge mud pit. But that snow has melted on those tracks and made them quite sloppy. It's only jam on the top, but it's gooey jam and it's slippery jam. Again, if you're up these sorts of areas like this, then take it careful because if you hook into some of those corners, you'll end up in the bushes. It really is like slippery stuff. As we left S16 track, it, um, it opened up and it was quite muddy. A lot of white trees. The landscape was completely different to what we had seen previous in the day. Yeah, the melted snow has definitely changed the condition of this road. It's amazing to see how much the, the scenery, the terrain changes from just normal gums up into the alpine gums and then obviously the bushfire affected areas. So lots of great scenery to see throughout the day. We tried to make our way to camp. The original campsite that we wanted to get to was Comets Flat. Part of the reason for that is that it was lower down in the valley and we were expecting snow. There's no snow here, so we figured, well, we can stay at Bob's Hut, which is perched nicely on top of this picturesque ridge. There's a, there's a hut behind us here that apparently was rebuilt in 2006, but it's a shelter. It's not a particularly historic hut. It's a very functional hut, but it's shelter for adverse conditions. Uh, probably needs a bit of a woman's touch. <laughs> but it'll do the job. Everyone's setting up as you can see behind me. We're going to be nice and warm. Bob's Hut's a free hut that anyone can use. We've decided to use it. It's a little bit rugged, but it gets us out of the wind and it's a warmer destination to camp. We've ended up at this hut, Bob's Hut I think it's called. I mean, we're not really using the hut, we're just using the space around, it's nice and cleared. We did come up here in search of some snow and unfortunately we haven't found any. I'm still looking, but I don't like my chances. One thing I love about the Austrac campus is how easy it is to get the kitchen out, get set up and get cooking. Now we're not being super creative tonight, we are going for basic crusty burgers, which is Simon Christie's version of a bush cooked hamburger. We've got the burgers here, they are coming along just beautifully. And a secret of mine tonight, we're going to see how the guys like it, we have got some potato salad that we're going to stick in those rolls with the hamburgers. So there we have it, the Simon Christie Four Drive TV special bush cooked hamburger. Courtesy of the Ice Track Camper, does it get any better or easier than that out here in the bush? Get into it guys. We've got another day of four driving and exploring tomorrow. Hopefully we find some snow, but even if we don't, we're definitely gonna have a good time, which I'm happy about. Uh, we're having jokes in the car about trying to find something to throw as a snowball, but I think we'd be have to throw sticks or rocks instead of snowballs. We're not gonna get there. Maybe tomorrow? Still hopeful that we will find some snow, but come the end of the day, first day anyway, we haven't seen any snow. Oh, I think I saw some on the ground over there. Yeah.
Like, I go and find it. I should go find it. Where am I standing? No, it's um, some sort of disgusting paper. That's not snow. And I'm not going to touch it. Oh, we've got a cameraman coming up. I'm going to give him a big smile. Big smile. Yeah. Hello, cameraman. Mm -hmm.